Hello guys, how is it going? It is Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. You would not believe it. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys uh, Vi Bannerman. This is another variation on Bannerman you can consider playing. Especially if, for example, let's say you have not got Fiora, maybe you have Lucian. I could definitely recommend this list. I could definitely recommend you can climb with this list. It's just as effective, if not sometimes more effective, depending on what your hand looks like. It has the potential to be very bursty and a lot faster than traditional Bannerman does, but, you know, that's not always going to happen. So the big difference in this list is the fact that we're running Lucian. Obviously, I've mentioned that. But we also run Senna alongside him because those two hand in hand just seem to just... It's literally just you run your Lucian, you're probably running Senna as well. Dex really powerful, I'm a really big fan of it. I'm a little bit hesitant on sharing Dex at the moment. We've got a patch coming up very soon. I'm kind of convinced Vi is going to get touched a little bit, but we'll have to wait and see. Regardless, all jokes aside, um, I'm pretty sure you can just feel comfortable playing this list and climbing guys like no joke it's very strong bannermans is crazy it's a very good mid-range deck in general and like the games are pretty quick you can have very deciding games as well it's just i'll stop talking now let's jump across and look at the cards quickly i'm not going to go through all of them just a few of them so basically, I just want to talk about Senna and Lucian. We do also run a couple of Rangers Resolves here, but the most of the package is still pretty much the same. Like Grizzled Ranger, obviously Bannerman. We have the Vi similar to other lists at the moment. Like the thing about Vi as well is that like decks that are running Vi are running Vi because they want to play against the other decks that are running Vi. And so the cycle continues, okay? Anyway, Lucian. So I've seen four plus allies die or center which is literally why like you want to consider running center because it's so powerful and it's not uncommon for you to find this board state where you curve Lu lucian into center and it puts your opponent in a very awkward position where most likely one of them is going to level up if you can most of the time you want to level up lucian and sometimes like it's not always going to happen but sometimes you'll find yourself in a position where they're trying to target your lucian maybe they're like trading into him or something or challenging him Utilize your single combat on your center to try and cheese them out a little bit and you can level up Lucian that way. You're, most of the time you're not going to level up Lucian from the 4 plus allies die. It will happen here and there but it's not usually going to happen. Usually that would happen against control and you've already like... It's, it's too late. Like you want this, this happens usually when Senna dies and you can set it up pretty easy. And that's when you get those really snowball-y uh, relentless pursuit turns and stuff and you just go to town like. So when Lucian levels up, by the way, each round the first time an ally dies, really, that's fucking insane. Double attacks there too, just to add an extra source, dude. I don't know, it's a really cool list. I'm a big fan of it. Um, we'll see what happens to Vi. I think a list like this could still be very strong. Uh, between this and the traditional Bannerman mid-range, like it's totally up to you. They fill different roles. This one is pretty well catered for like dealing with like other aggro decks and just being a lot faster than the other one. But you know, they're both great decks. This deck's really cool. Enjoy the games here. I just want to say one more thing. I had a bit of a sore throat, so I do apologize. It literally, literally felt like somebody was like karate chopping me. And especially if I ever laughed, it made it sound worse. I'm okay now, but um, we'll play one of the later games first. And then we'll kind of just go with the rest of them if you want to pick up some more information. But yeah, just, I do apologize. You guys have a fantastic day. As always, thank you for the support. I will see you soon. Fine, we got this. Yeah, this hand looking extra weird. <laughs> There's probably an argument to keep. Oh, that's pretty decent. I think the most realistic way to adjust Ranger is to get rid of the four attack. I don't care if he has health. It's a four attack. I mean, the closest comparison with uh, Grizzled Ranger is Curse Keeper. Which, this essentially is a Curse Keeper that has three more attack and can block for three more mana. So you're paying that three mana for being able to block and having four attack. It seems good. Plus it has Scout. I'm actually here. Yeah, I think you just make Grizzled Ranger a 2-2 and call it a day. 
even then it's still always going to be valuable. I don't think you're ever going to nerf it that much. There's also the fact that it's trying to represent a certain class and region, which is supposed to be strong with stats. But I think a 4-1 is a bit too much for its uh, first form. We'll call it the first form. How much do I value? Um, holy shit, he's choosing not to attack. That's insane. I think you always attack there, but I can block with this, but I was more concerned about the plunder if I'm being completely and ent entirely openly honest. We should always be developing at the moment. Fuck me. So what's the play? Someone else. I'm pretty sure we're swinging this turn. I'm entirely sure that we're swinging. He might not even block us at all. He's gonna get a ton of leveling up on um. This is still just the line. Buffing the Cythria, I don't know if that really matters, but I'm spreading it out because Lucian has a quick attack and usually gets it in. I mean, I could have got punished by Elixir of Iron on Ember Maiden. That could have been a punish, so I guess he doesn't have Elixir of Iron. So now all my units have been damaged at any point. Noxian Guillotine is going to be a card. So he's already um plundered me this turn. So there's no value in trying to deny the overwhelm damage. Although can't deny Swain getting leveled. Swain, it doesn't take long for Swain to level. If I single combat here, that just seems really bad, right? I'm gonna lose my Lucian. Nothing feels right. No matter what, I'm losing my Lucian. I'm, use, I'm losing my Cythria. I'm, I'm ready. I'll fight this for now. What does this change? He wants to play Swain on curve, right? He always wants to play Swain on curve. He didn't have Elixir of Iron, maybe he doesn't have it still. To be honest, I didn't see that line until the very last second. That was like a real panic play then. But holy shit, I think that worked out really well for us. So um Bloodsworn Pledge gives him permanently a buff, hey. That's pretty cool. I'm leaning into the center. I'm gonna try and level up either center or Lucian. Yeah, Rangers are most stats. I'm playing for. This is kind of an off turn, hey? It could have gone either way. I don't know. I couldn't tell you, but I know that when Lucian dies, this gets buffed. When this dies, Lucian gets buffed. Go 
The order kind of does matter here. I feel like I always buff Lucian. But does Senna go first or Senna go last? Go ahead. I don't know. Senna goes first. There's a chance that like he wants to block it. They're not dying either of them though. So possibly the Ranger was the correct line here. Like he, it's weird. He like, he can't just ignore this board completely. Lovely at my center. Damn soon. I think I'm okay with this outcome. I knew that the damage the damage you got with the Ember Maiden was eventually gonna become relevant. I guess that was probably like an okay, okay time. So we probably play Swain here. Swain's like his number one play. Sejuani. That's, that's a play. Shit. play the chicken so this is always happening and we're always passing fuck this is such an awkward hand so most likely we'll be developing but he will also be developing something Ranger. This thing gets to attack multiple times, so I guess it makes the most sense. Hail, War Mother. Drive them before us, Era. Time to get rowdy. I played Vi this turn. Challenge, challenge. I still don't push the damage I need. Play Ranger if he block the Badger Bear. Show them our teeth. Hang on. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. I know what you mean now. Shit. the moves my value block this Challenging this always makes sense, unless I want to try and guarantee getting Sejuani off the field, which is honestly more of a threat. But he has to block me. Just makes sense. 
I can get ruined by a frostbite card, but I do think they're running that kind of card. I don't mind it. Prove your worth. He has to block me. He needs a card to react. Yeah, son of a bitch. You wouldn't have believed it. You wouldn't believe it. The Swiftling, I got greedy. I was super greedy. Yeah, I wouldn't believe it. Okay. That was really greedy of me. Oh. I'm still happy with the line though. I committed to a play and I chose it. Understanding the outcome. Like, I don't usually think I've seen take out before. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Be damaging, buffing up. Oh, spooky. We always play Vi. Here comes the punchline. And I might be able to do some weird combat tricks with the Bolt Breaker next turn. Got double challenging units to try and guarantee something hits him in the face. I'll be forced to challenge no matter what. The difference here is like if I chose not to be greedy. He would have no Sejuani on board. I wouldn't have a Swiftling Lancer, but I may have been able to play something this turn as well. Artillery barrage. I, I can't develop this turn. Because the Swain can bum me out. This is the line. And just hope for the best. Unless I want to preserve I wanna no, no I wanna preserve my fire. The ordering's a little bit wrong there. So in case he does have an answer, I'll be able to at least buff my buy with the Evolve Breaker. He's sitting on like... Oh, the annoying thing is if he, if he has another Noxian Guillotine, I can't beat that. He already played one before, like... I don't think I play around it again. He has to respond here first, so at least I'll know what to do. Once he clears the Badger Bear. So I, I do have the attacking advantage right about now. He's taking his time here. Which could mean one of two things. He's pretty tilted and he's gone to get a snack. Or he's about to use a quite an expensive resource that he's not sure. He has an answer, but if he does it, is it worth? What has to be worth? You're going to lose the game. I'm going to go with option A. He's gone for a snack. <laughs> He's like, fuck this. I want to find a sandwich. <laughs> GG. I'm pretty happy with how we played that game. Um... I think the Swiftling Lancer was a bit greedy of me. I think that should always just go into Sejuani, expecting him to play Take Heart. But um, I haven't really played much Swain decks, nor have I seen their lists too commonly. I like I understand generally what they play, but I don't think I've seen Ember Maiden in a Swain list for a while. So at that point, I should have been like a bit on edge. Like, Take Heart, I like I I feel like I know they don't play that. Uh, Grizzled Rangers is pretty insane. I'll write my own story. Uh, hopefully... 
get some stuff to stick. You should probably play something before I play Benjamin next turn. <clears throat> Unless he's sitting on a dead hand. It's okay. I guess he prioritizes that. Mojo. <laughs> hey man, um, saw your burn video on YouTube. Really enjoyed it. Probably <laughs> one of my faves. Uh, you've got to be kidding me, Mojo. Thank you. What the heck? You know this is a free stream, right? <laughs> Thanks, dude. Um. Yeah, that that video. I was really hesitant on putting it up. But um, I had footage there and I thought it'd be funny to go up. That's that's incredible, man. Thank you. <laughs> oh, I Joe did. Ah, he takes his blocks here. Thanks, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it, though. Let me let me know if you want to see more burn aggro content. Glad you liked him, man. <laughs> Got a bit of a sore throat. Um, whenever I laugh, it actually hurts, so it's kind of weird. Thanks for the support, man. I'm gonna play some dudes this turn. I'm gonna play a one dude that costs a one mana, and then I'll figure out. Uh, what the other play will be. It's a play a dude that has four attack. Yeah, yeah, Ionia speaks through me. I think I know what this money is going towards. I need to get some nice sub badges. Because at the moment I'm using this really, really uh, cheap Cheap one that I made myself, which was pretty much just a copy of my logo. It'd be nice to change that, thank you. Yeah, I think it'd be cool, especially if they end up nerfing it next patch. <coughs> yeah, that was one of the reasons why I was pretty hesitant, because it most likely is. I think Boom Crew Rookie is going to be, if not the only card that would be affected it by anything though. I don't think there's anything else to be buffed or nerfed. Um... Shit, what do I do here? I think I just have to play C3, alright. Will of Ionia. Yeah, I think Boom Crew Rookie is the main culprit for that deck. I think uh, one of the common things I hear is to make it a one mana, make it a one three. But I think that kind of ruins the card completely. I think what would make more sense would be to actually make it deal one damage and not deal two. We still swing, right? <coughs> Yeah, plan the next video. Next video I plan to upload would be the solution by list. But um You suck. I guess there's no point in blocking them. But yeah, we just need to we need the patch notes to come out. That'll be a cool video to make as well. Shit. I got eight mana. It's like a beefy saboteur, correct. I don't know, I think it's pretty overtuned that it deals two damage. I couldn't count on my hands how many times I've like lost simply to the sheer value of Boom Karuki. Do you discard the random card? He did. It was a stone seeds. Doesn't seem like a card he'd be purposely running. 
I'm probably going to rally this turn, if I'm being honest. I think it's a pretty good value rally. It's still a pretty good value rally. What does he do? He can't actually clear this. I don't think he has a 3 mana card that can deal with the 3 HP on this. Unless he draws into a gotcha. Then that's going to stink. 100% want to rally this turn. I want to get Karma off the field. He's obviously going to... He might be... He's forced to like block one of them. Rest. Now he's forced to block none of them. He's got pretty low hand size, so we're pretty strong. Like, it's my attack still. This is crazy. So, Sithria is like the cliche play. It's going for the win, so I don't mind it. I'm gonna go for the win here. Show them what we're made of. I'm only playing around like Will of Ionia. He's already played one, so there could be a chance he hasn't got another one. The stun works too. I'll actually pass. I'll float two mana here. I have a single combat in hand, which could be used with my spell mana. And then I'm not really faced. Still gonna pass here. There's no point in attacking because like I'm just gonna get healing and damage my units. <clears throat> One mana thermo beam. I guess he's keen to level up Ezreal ASAP or he loses the game. I'm still not going to play uh, Bright Seal Protector. What is Unless he, because he, I doubt he opened a taxi. Okay, he goes for it. Shit. Should be careful not to take too much damage here. Can I afford to go down to seven? Weird. It's a weird number if I'm being honest. I really need Sithria to win this game. Like he needs like double get excited in hand or oh, mystic shot. Then my beam. Sure, I'll block. I'll block one. I think nine is a bit more safe. I think I want to go into double get excited range. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a thing. I'm gonna give this uh, divine shield in case he has a thermo beam in hand and he wants to try and cheese me. It limits his options. He's putting puff caps into my deck too, so I do have to be kind of careful about that. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna play some dudes and try and catch him on the open attack. He would need to will like once I go under mana, so I pass here. This is so if I swing, he can block uh three units. I actually don't think I can slow play here. It's kind of weird. I think I have to develop something to guarantee I kill him this turn. So let's go for the Bannerman first. And hopefully I dodge the uh, Thermo Beam. Burst speed so we can still fish for a Thermo Beam. Stun works too. Son of a bitch. I think I was playing too passive then. Ah, oh, fuck. Bring in the heat. My steel is yours.
let's see. I have to get value a single combat here to deny him some healing next turn and some units. should have held that single combat honestly for Israel. I might get punished for that. I may very much get punished for that. That actually might lose me the game. We'll see. Alright, let's mess some folks up. I'll leave one card in hand to make him think that there's a chance. You tell me there's a chance there could be a single combat in hand. Just go dodge the Israel, you son of a bitch. Don't know what they're up against. Don't blink or you miss me. Son of a bitch. It's not bragging if you could back it up. Defend our banner. Gotcha. Defend our banner. Wow. Guess I just lose. I think I played that really terribly. Perhaps first game jitters, but not really. I've already played some games today. That was a bit disappointing. I um, was developing slow plays that were costing me pressure. That's okay. Like, what was I supposed to do differently? I wasn't pushing lethal damage. And that single, that single combat was just a big mistake. That was like really bad. I could have like maybe... He, he still could have killed me with like burst spells, but I could have caught him. There was more... More ways to win if I didn't do that. So this is a race. It's all about the uh, race. I'm gonna keep Illusion. Hopefully fish for a one drop. Yeah, we miss a one drop. <clears throat> Probably should have mulliganed the Illusion as well. One drops are way too important. But at least we have a three. Yeah, hey, we got kind of lucky there. So I think we should always develop dilution first. That's quick attack, which allows me to swing. But coming back into our turn, we kind of have to trade him in anyway. We're still going to swing here. Actually, it's kind of strange that the Boom Karuki is his uh, two mana play. It means I can take a block with Lucian, which is kind of really good. And he probably is going to develop here. Yeah, so this gets really strong. It's probably gonna sit on blood transfusion, but I don't think I'm gonna play around blood transfusion this game. If he doesn't swing, it's just it's clear to me that he doesn't have blood transfusion, so I'll take those opportunities. So in in this match, yeah. <laughs> in this match, you outrace him. You race him, and you hope to take over the board. At that point, if he doesn't have blood transfusion, it's really tough for him to proceed in that. Because I always block the Badger Bear into the Boom Karuki. And I always block the um, Lucian into the Disciple. And then he just has to use the Blood Transfusion to get like a really strong turn there. Why is my throat killing me? Sip on this cold drink. What am I versing? <laughs> I think I always find myself in a mistake when I hold too many two drops. If you were doing a serious climb, what which deck would you roll with? This one. 
This is why I'm playing it now. Lucian Vi. Or if you're, if you're patient enough, uh, Lux Karma. I think mid-range decks like Bannerman tend to have like that good balance between um, game speed and win rate. Just general performance. Like if I play a burn deck, I think there's a slightly less slightly less win rate. That's this is an argument to be made, but um burn decks are a bit more polarizing, so you can have an inconsistent climb, but you can definitely have a quick climb. Uh Bannerman always has a chance against every deck. And then you still have those strong matchups. And by matchups, probably what comes down to the most is the uh, cards in hand. And as you kind of uh, play on curve. I think Bannerman just generally like, you'll know by a certain amount of time how the matchup's going if you just like can it. But at the same time, you always have a chance of winning. Burn decks, sometimes you can just go, oh, okay, this, you're, this game's done in like a couple of minutes. So you go to the next one, whether you win or lose. Um, he's playing some Poros, so I'm going to play some dudes to contest his Poros. And then we'll go from there. I'd have to argue that Bannerman's probably the best deck to climb with. And to wrap up that whole... What I was talking about. Oh. Sinister Poros. Fearsome. I was actually going to discuss that in this video. He... Yep, we're gonna swing like this. I don't mind clearing his poros. He values his poros a lot more than his uh, health. I don't think you ever block here with your poros. You might consider hitting the Fleetwood Tracker with the um the one one without fearsome, but even then, all it takes is a poro snacks, and he's in a really good spot. Unfortunately, I have to float some mana here. We've had a pretty awkward draw. Perfect opportunity for my opponent to punish us now. We needed a three drop there. We needed the Badger Bear. And Bannerman, Badger Bear wins games. <laughs> so like at this point, I could almost like, like throw the towel in. We've had a pretty awkward draw and I think it might be wasting my time. I'll write my own story. But it all played out because uh, when we're, you know, streaming, etc. like. We want to be showing off a full game. Oh boy, what am I supposed to do here though? This is uh, this is rough. Like floating three mana like this in a Bannerman deck, even like floating spell mana in general is just very rough. Very rough. And as soon as those poros get buffed to three or above attack, we're not going to be able to do much. You could be sitting on a Poro snack. I'm gonna drag you down. I am going to. Ah, I don't want to kill his board, but I feel like I have to. It's not uncommon for him to be sitting on Poro snacks at all. Best I can do is just swing like this. So he wants to, he, he should be using Poro Snacks here, right? He should be using Poro Snacks. This could tell me a lot about his hand. Example, if he doesn't use Poro Snacks here, then I don't know what he's planning on doing. Okay. I'm gonna try and utilize this single combat to get a lot of value from my chicken. Uh, no, Swiftly Lancer. I think that's worse. We just uh, destroyed his board. He has more Poros. I'm gonna go super wide here. 
I'm probably going to play the Swiftling, Silverwing, Vanguard. Oh, did you get into the snacks? Uh, correct. Uh, it's probably not. I think it has to be Grizzled Ranger. Has better trades. Okay. You suck. You suck, my friend. See, we never block any of this. So we just slam down to three on her for the best. Show them what we're made of. We're sitting on pursuit. Sorry, uh, relentless pursuit. I can feel my. Oh, oh, you suck. Um, is that even worth? You could just be dead here with that play, my guy. So we should always do this so we can guarantee getting another swing with Sithria. 10 redeemed hydrate. How you going, buddy? My throat's killing me, dude. I feel like a new day, a new problem. You've gone and spoke them. What have Poros done to you? <sighs> I think this game's already over, but he doesn't know it yet. How do I um? He needs to be able to play one unit, right? That even won't be enough. Oh, he's just dead. He had to block the um Cithria. That was weird. Swinging with the Cithria last was kind of relevant there because ah, uh, I think it just kills him then at that point. Day off today, 10, no school. I would assume so. I'm guessing it's Saturday at the moment. Or maybe it's Friday. Saturday here. So this is probably Mogwise. Uh, list you know what the bride still is not the best two drop to keep though i really need to hit that one drop but this hand would be super powerful with a one drop like it'd be insanely powerful against him i'm gonna take a bit of a risk here i'm gonna keep a two a two into three into five and hopefully if we're crazy we will find a one drop I'm probably taking a bit of a gamble here. It looks like it might be paying off. Saturday. True. <clears throat> so we never take this attack. Because we want to Bright Steel Protector, our wing. We also don't want him to plunder though, which is really fucking awkward. I don't like people having random cards from my deck at all. I really don't like that. But I think I have to sacrifice the single turn of pilfering and hope that doesn't impact the game too much. I'm not going to play around the cards in my deck. I'm still going to play a 3 drop here. Got your back. That's probably the best one for him to have there. Because um, it's a single card on reduction, which is fine. Double 1 drop seems really good. I think they run Make It Rain, so fuck you. I should have played um, Bright Steel first. A little bit of an uh, overlook there. It, it makes 100% of sense just to play the uh, Bright Steel first to protect my protect my character. You're covered. But hey, we got lucky. Protect and strike. Um, 
What, is, what does this mean for us if I do this trade? It means that we're super susceptible to another make it rain. <laughs> so if anything, I'd honestly be better off swinging like this. But I value my units quite a lot. I'm just going to take this banter for now. Like dealing damage to him right now directly, I don't value that a lot. Let's see what he plays here. We're always slapping Vi down on turn 5. I think I would prefer to develop a Lucian instead of a Badger Bear this turn. I'm not greedy. My friends you, missed, you missed your buff, dude. That's so good for us. I really don't care about Warning Shot. I want to slap Lucian down because he's more of a threat than the 4-4 Badger Bear is right now. Although the Badger Bear can take value trades. So since he's doing this, I don't need to block the Omen Hawk anymore. But he won't swing. So we always play uh, Vi here. They don't run harsh winds, so it's really not a problem. He needs to develop some sort of board here. I could do something a little bit cheesy where I use the Vi. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, okay. Now I can't be cheesy. I have to use the Vi to sacrifice into that unit. Do I have to? Dude, what a, what a stinker. Hello there. You can block there. That's a pretty insane roll for my opponent, but I think we can still manage. I used to love the plunder. Never liked playing much against it. <laughs> yeah, of course you take that block. And hey, Lucian's so close to leveling up. My duty's done. He's got the, um, fuck, he's got the, uh, Sejuani in hand. Pain is nothing. Here's an important decision. I can choose not to play around second, but he can start to frostbite me. All he has to do is damage me in the face. He used his warning shot though, so... What I realistically should do in this position, which point is the best play, is to go super wide on the board and play Sithria on the slow play next turn and hope for the best. I don't have to do it right now, but he's always going to swing into my Lucian. I'm going to play Badger Bear for now. This is really tough. He's like actually leveled up Sejuani. That's insane. Fight for your lives. There's always a chance that he doesn't have the uh, warning shot in hand. I think that's the only damage source outside of make it rain. I can't afford to play around making rain hitting my face on a random chance. I've just got to go in now. He'd be, he'd be making a mistake if he uses the um make it uh warning shot prior to the attack. So he'll wait till I attack before he does anything. And that is buffed. Shit. We still got a swing. Uh, there's nothing else to be done here. Just gonna dodge the warning shot. That sucks. I don't think there's a way we can win. Yeah, I think that's it. I think they're um. Stand and fight. 
There may have been a way to play around this. He drew pretty good. I'm still pretty happy with the way we played. There's like no point in doing this because the misfortune always triggers first, which makes it even more rough in the guts. Well played. We had a really good hand too, so did my, so did our opponent though. Um, it's important that we find the one drop here. I could be kind of going a bit greedy here by keeping the four and three. I like the four and three though. There's always a chance that we find a two. I'll be happy with the one or two, either or. Wow, amazing curve. We've been missing out on these these attack tokens, which has kind of been a bit of a bummer. Does it normally lag? It might be because, um, whoa. And spice. One sec. I'll just watch, I'll see what happens if I watch the stream. It appears to be okay for me. I'm hoping that it's your internet. No, it sounds bad, but... Hopefully it's not because I'm recording. Just give it a minute. I'll see, I'll see if I can change it after this game. It might be because I'm recording, but I oftentimes do record while I stream, so... Do I just um, throw in the towel and let him lose all that mana? I don't think I'm the player that can afford to let him float all that mana. I mean, the best play would be to play Thermo Beam against the 3 mana 4 4. Shit, you're kidding me. We should always develop the Bannerman for the attack here. It makes a lot of sense. Safeguard our citizens. Gee. I think um I should if he's um doing nothing here I should probably buff this to play around get excited He might have gone AFK I don't know he seemed to pass the turn pretty quickly there though so it's a little bit strange He's fine to go down to 3 HP though. It's a fine number to be at. He's sitting at 6 now. So this turn he wants to play a uh, dude. I never blocked this and hopefully we just dodge the Radiant Guardian. I can um... He wants to play Radiant Guardian this turn 100%. I can actually play Fleetwood Tracker here. Hopefully we dodge the thermo beam dodge the thermo beam if he doesn't have the thermo beam here i'm gonna go super wide this turn he's gonna thermo beam the fleetwood tracker which is actually not too bad for me okay he's not gonna do that i'm pretty free to develop here now so we 100 percent open attack here we swing with the Fleetwood Tracker last, as well as um, swinging like something like this. 
And we want the center to be towards the end. So that... Uh, we want center to be... Around about here. This makes the most sense. I want to buff this to separate the damage from removal sources. There may have been an argument to buff the 3-3 three, three instead. He only has 6 mana. It's quite tough for him to... There we go. He had the answer. Shit. I forgot about single combat. Interesting line where I could have played that differently. I think I'll know for next time to consider that. I wasn't really thinking about single combat there, which is actually kind of a relevant card. At this point, I should probably just develop a Vi and let the turn pass. Ah. That exact play. I will play my part. I'm gonna buff my board. One banner, one destiny. Get back here. So what do I do here? I think I should place your 3R. Playing slow here means that he has uh, mana banked up for Thermobeam for Sithria or Will of Ionia. If I was to play Vi, uh, it would kind of make more sense than Scythrio. This is because he can block a few units. Unless I want to utilize my single combat to play around some stuff. Scythrio is my biggest unit in hand. I'm just going to play my biggest dude and attempt to pressure my opponent. Okay. What do I prioritize here? Getting his getting the amounts of healing he wants to do against me off would be nice. the Cythria to make her a 4-4 as well. You cannot escape. And that's that. Shadow. We've got a bulky hand. Remembrance, hopefully we dodge the Radiant Guardian. Never lucky. <laughs> Boy, never lucky. So he usually... We can do this. this is my best blocker for Radiant Guardian. This is my best blocker. Vi stands for vicious. I can go down here. Slow down, will you? <sighs> Hit him where it hurts. Trouble coming at ya. Feel the sea. 
Buff the ranger? Puts it out of um... Why would I buff the ranger here? And why would I not swing with the Vylast? Buff the ranger here. I think it makes sense. <clears throat> Will of Ionia, Health Potion, Final Spark. Well, what's happening here? Well, he's not supporting the Ranger. It doesn't give him the buff. Oh no, it's because she's leveling up prior to what happening. Okay. Got 12 mana. I can play all my dudes. I think we should be able to get this. We have enough. We have like the perfect hand for this. It's always going to hit the buy, right? By the light. So we will play our cards slowly out of hand. I have enough for all these cards. Like this. The last card in hand is going to be the money maker. I'm not sure why he didn't um, play that prior to the final spark, but I guess he was waiting to see what, mana, what I was planning on doing. So this should wrap up the game, I'm pretty sure. Not entirely sure, actually. There's um, a chance he can, he can stay alive, but it revolves me pretty much killing his entire board, so it'll also put him in a just as bad position.